Hello and good morning friends. Welcome to the CEC ADC live lecture. Dear friends, as you know that uh, we are carrying with a series on graphics and print production and uh, under the series we have uh, so far conducted numerous lectures and uh, with the help of these lectures we have tried to understand more about the graphics, we have tried to understand about the print production. So taking our series forward, dear friends, in this session today uh, under the series graphics and print production, today we are going to understand about uh, visual editing. What is visual editing? We are going to get in-depth knowledge on this very topic and for this we have again with us in our studios Professor N. N. Sarkar. Professor N. N. Sarkar is a retired professor from IIMC and he has authored numerous books. So dear friends, let's take advantages from his experiences and try to understand more about visual editing. So without wasting any time, first of all I would like to welcome our guest Professor N. In, in Sarkar. Professor Sarkar, welcome to the ADSET lecture. Thank you. And uh, as you are carrying this series, uh, so today we are going to discuss more on visual editing. So over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Gitika. <coughs> and welcome, viewer, again. Uh, we are discussing the series of lectures on graphic and print production. As I had uh, mentioned earlier, that <coughs> graphics uh, design should be reproduced and it has got three components, typographical component or the uh, letter, uh, letter form, uh, the visual comp component, layout. The, uh, in my last class, we have discussed about the physical form of visuals and different techniques and the use of visuals in communication. Today, we are basically discussing on visual editing. Uh, you have heard the word editing of text content. But today we are discussing the visual content. Text content refers to refining the language, uh, making the grammatical correction, and so that the content is easy for, easy to read and understand the content. Here also we edit the visuals to uh, <coughs> make it pleasing to our eyes and also uh, relevant to our content. And what do you mean by, why editing? why we go for editing the visuals. It is because whenever we use the visuals for uh, <coughs> our design, the, all the visuals we are getting from different sources, maybe from the photographers, maybe from the illustrators, and these visuals are not according to the size we utilize in our design. That's why visual editing is must. And <coughs> to decide the exact content, and that will illustrate our, our communication materials. What is editing? Editing is a process of deciding on the required content, elimination of unwanted elements, altering the contents, compensation for technical defects, and scaling and cropping to fit the pictures in a design. So we, uh, uh, we try to explain it in details. Deciding the content, when, how you decide the content. See, when you see the visuals, you get so many things uh, on the, as a content, but not all the contents is required for your design. So how to decide the content is conventionally, uh, we decide the content with the help of uh, this two L scale, it is called L scale. It is very easy to make. You take a little bit hard uh, paper or the thick paper, uh, but it is not a board. It is not so thick. And it can, you can cut it as a L shape as you can do it, as you do it for the learner's uh, L to paste it on your uh, vehicle as you have started learning the driving. The same way you cut it and it should be very uh, uh, right angle uh, shape. The two scales are required like this. So you can do it easily. Now this scale can be placed, so these are visuals to be edited. Take the visuals to be edited. And these visuals, that all the contents is not required for my purpose. So what I'll have to do it, I'll have to place the L opposite to each other like this, opposite to each other, but then it can be shifted 
it can be shifted as uh, required for your uh, for your design so this shifting can be done horizontally or vertically say for example i want to make the only face of that the uh, the content of the visuals so i can take it this way this is horizontally i can take it if it is at vertically then we can then again slide the scales and we can take this vertically you can further we can down it to get the more content this is the way we select the content what is the effect you are getting the effect is that you are getting your content within the frame this scale is making the frame and uh, within the frame you understand the visual much more and now uh, you have might have noticed the photographers when they're taking the photograph they use that hand like this what does it mean they want to take the pictures within the frame the frame is between that their fingers the same things we do it when we get this hard copy for our design so the basic purpose is that make the content within a frame and within the frame you can judge it very well otherwise it will be confused for the printer or the to uh, the person who is designing the content <coughs> oh, this is a conventional hard copy is concerned we do it uh, there this way but if it is this this most of the design we do it in computer so in a computer also we can select the content for example uh you take a visual editing software like photoshop or image editing software any image editing software and select the pictures the pictures you may think about that these are pictures you are thinking the the pictures this particular area you want to select the rest of the area you don't need it so naturally you can eliminate that portion or the selection tools which is a crop selection tools on it select and put it on the pictures uh, drag it on the pictures and it will create this form like this and you get the handles from top and bottom and to side and two sides the two sides of the handles can be can be dragged to make the size different as per your requirement for example this is the size you have condensed it so uh, it is different than the other one and also you can shift the or or the the shift the area select uh, selected area to other part of the pictures and you can decide the content so this is the way you select the right content and when the right content is selected and double click it and you get the picture like this your selected picture is like this so this is the way in the computer you can select the content the next is unwanted elements what about the unwanted elements persons not needed in the pictures you have the pictures but some of the persons are the pictures which are not needed for example you have taken a group photographs in which some of the professionals are there and on the background you find or at the side of it you find there is a peon who is not needed in the pictures then you can eliminate this part of the human body or the project or the, uh, <coughs> or the unrelevant object uh, when a group of people are sitting and you need only the three persons other person's hand is not required or uh, some of the uh, the visuals say say as flask is there on the table which is not needed so you can eliminate it it is a matter which is not relevant suppose you have the background and some of the backgrounds uh, are uh, are containing some retail matter which is not relevant to the content we are discussing and object logos and brand name suppose my shirt is carrying a brand name i am delivering a lectures on a government organization and i am carrying a logo on my shirt it is a say, Uh, the corporate logo which is not relevant which is definitely objectionable which can be eliminated so here see the example of the see the example of the pictures see this example in this pictures you find a person which is there whose nose and a part of the body is is 
showing on the pictures, which is, which is really disturbing the pictures, then this, part, this portion should be eliminated so that you can select the right content. Some of the technical defects also you'll find it, over and un unexposed photographs, color cast on the photographs, relief mark of a ballpoint pen. Many times we send a photograph for printing, we write the captions on the background of the photographs. And when they write the captions with a ballpoint pen, that depression marks will be showing from the front side, which will look relief, and that will be visible at the time uh, when you print the photographs. And that, that means it will lower the quality of the visuals or printed page. Uh, dust settle on the content. If the pho photographs you are keeping it for quite some time, and and some of the dust or undesirable particles will be on the photographs, and when you scan that, it will be visible on the photographs, and that will be visible when you print the photographs. So these are to be eliminated. Resolution and other digital image. Uh, these days, most of the photographs we print it from either from scanned image or the image taking from digital photography. So while taking the photographs, you'll have to take care of the resolution of the image. If a <coughs> too much of resolution or high resolution or low resolutions will distort the image, so take care of the resolution of the image. Uh, take the example of ex overexposed, underexposed a normal image. Here is the comparison. Same image, the left hand side, you get this over, uh, this underexposed, which is looking so dark. The middle one is a properly exposed one. The last one is overexposed, which is uh, looking so light. So this aspect to be taken care of while selecting the content. So naturally, we'll prefer the content which is normal exposed. That's the middle one. Here the, the color cast, you get the photographs, the, the extreme right one, you are having the color cast, the blue color cast, whereas the middle one, it is an orange color cast or the red, is, red color, color cast is, is visible. So this color cast can be removed and the right one will be the left one. The, you get the left one, this is a part of visual editing. If you get the pictures like this and you can remove this cast with the help of editing softwares. Resolution of the image. The right resolution for the printing to be selected, generally 300 dpi resolution is appropriate for the image. The same image, if it is at 72 dpi, which will be pixelated, and it will, if you select this one, definitely it will lower down the quality of the image. Many times on the computer screen, you can, you cannot judge it, its resolution, as because the screen resolution is not that resolution which should be printed. So the low resolution and high resolution may not be detected accurately on the screen. So while selecting the photographs, you will have to select the appropriate resolution. So generally 300 dpi is the appropriate resolution for printing. Altering the content. So naturally this, the altering gives a different type of look of the image and many situations it is appropriate for the content. So there are various altering techniques can be achieved using the Photoshop's uh, editing program and filter prep, filter uh, tools can alter the content. So let's see how the because I am not teaching here the computer, but how the some of the content can be altered. You just see it from these examples. See this. This is a line image or the vector image. If the image is on on paper, it is called line image. But the same image, if it is on computer, then it is a light image. So you can add some of the elements 
add great some effect. For example, here you are giving a tint as a circular tint on the background of the content and you get this effect. Now, you have altered the content. Here also you can get the content, but this one is a half tone image. That is they are slightly different than the previous one. Line image is there, another effect has been created on the background. So, this is the image you call it silhouette image. You can identify the image by only outline of the visuals without any details. The details are they are made solid. So, this is also the same visuals we have altered and created different type of effect. This is the image is a cut out image. The image has been cut it out from rest of the content. So, it can highlight the highlight the content and create a different type of effect. Many times we find it is very appropriate to communicate the message. Here a photographs a different type of screen is applied. This is called major tint screen and a different type of effect has been created. The screen can be different types such as this is called solarized effect. In this the if photographs we have eliminate the middle tone and the other tones middle other higher tone only retaining the contrast tone that gives the effect of the photographs, but definitely not looks like a photograph. It is the effect, it is called solarization effect. Here is another effect, it is called posterization effect. The photographs are going to give a different type of flat tones on the photographs, we call it a solarization effect. This is also create different type of mood. Instead of using the same photographic tones, we use and that, that flat tones and get an effect. This is a part of the visuals or altering the content. This is the image. We apply the dots. Dots are generally used for printing a continuous tone image on a printed page. But many times this that half tone dots is amplified and this effect is called quarter tone effect. You can identify the dots very easily and this dots if it, is, if it is reduced you get this half tone which is shown on the corner. This is another effect. Uh, in this case we have applied lines, horizontal lines to break the continuous tone. Generally, that we break the continuous tone to print the image on a, on a page, but that is a dot image, dotted image. In this case, we have, we have broken the image by horizontal lines and the terminology is called half line, half line image. So, this is the way we can alter the content. Here is a pictures, it was a black and white pictures. In this pictures, we have applied a second color that is the blue colors and giving the effect of two colors and the two color effects is called duotone effect. That color can be changed to blue to brown, brown to yellow, any color we can change, but black will remain for all the images. But when you, when you are using the two colors, then it will be called duotone effect. Here is the photographs in which we have taken the shape is oval shape, but the shape is altered by using the edges of the image blurred. This blurred effect is called vignette effect. The gradually, gradually content is fading with the background. Blue color is fading with the background. The green color of the leaves fading with the background. Ground leaves are also fading with the background. So this is called feathering effect. So, it have, you have altered the content by using the feathering filter. 
or the Vignette filter. These are feathering effect. Here, the fading effect is given at the background of the image, so that image is looking a bit relief. That is called feathering effect, and feathering filter is used the background of the image. So these are the some of the techniques we have learned for altering the altering the content. This way, you have got hundreds of effect if you learn the photoshops and use the filter and you can get numerous effects and you you can alter your content <coughs> this is another effect pixelization effect deliberately you have pixelized the image that is also an effect. Now, scaling and cropping. Scaling means making the pictures enlarged or reduced. Cropping means elimination of part of the photographs. So, how you can do it? There are different way you can do the scaling and cropping. Scaling and conventionally we can do it in a diagonal line method. What do you mean by diagonal line method? Here, take this photographs. The blue area is the area of your visuals. Now, you draw a diagonal line through the image that is the blue area from the one corner to another corner, extend it and on extending you create the rectangle keeping the corner common on one corner the, at the left and another corner at the right. As you keep on enlarging the, the, the rectangle, you get the different sizes. Same way, if you reduce the rectangle and, and keep the corner or the, or the left corner and the right, uh, right top corner along with the diagonal line, you get the reduction size. This is a very easy way to do the, do the, uh, do the scaling. So here, you are, what you are doing? You are scaling it, reducing or enlarging it. And naturally, when you are asking the printer to do the scaling, you will have to mention how much reduction should be done or hand was enlargement should be done. It should be done either horizontally or vertically. You cannot do it at both sides. If you do it at both sides, the pictures will be reduced. If it is an irregular shape, suppose uh, irregular shape to be enlarged and reduced, the, take the example, this is not a rectangle. But unless it will make a rectangle around that irregular shape, you will not be able to scale it. So, what you are doing it? You are drawing a parallel line on the top at the back bottom and also <coughs> diagonally you also parallel line that will make a rectangle. Now, you go through the uh, and draw the diagonal line through the rectangle and as you draw it and you make a your required rectangle is smaller, then fit your regular shape, irregular shape or the oval shape within a rectangle and you get that reduced rectangle. In case uh, cropping and diagonal method, that this, that this Examples given you the idea of scaling reduction or enlargement as the photograph or the image is, but when the image is not in proportion to the required area, then the area, some of the areas should be cropped. Without cropping, you cannot scale it. 
how you are scaling it, why you are scaling it? Because you make it a reduction and an enlargement. When you make it a reduction and enlargement, you cannot do it without cropping it if, because this crops will give you the proportionate size. Without proportion, you cannot scale it. So here you are what were doing it, drawing, draw a rectangle of your required dimensions of the, di of the original illustration. Let one of the corners be corners of both dimensions be common. Take this example. This is a required and this is a colored one is a original. The, the, your original should be fit within the required. So it, it as because it is not in proportion, then some of the portion should be should be cropped. How it should be done? See the place the origin the place the original on the required, keeping the common corner. Common corner is the left bottom corner is the common corner for both. Now draw the diagonal line through the through the required. Through the required, when you are drawing the diagonal line through the required, it will intersect one of the sides of the original. From there, you create a rectangle. This rectangle portion should be eliminated. That this highlighted one on the top should be cropped. And after cropping, you are getting your your original proportionate to the required. But it is still it is bigger than your your <coughs> your required size bigger than the required size. If you cut the required size, if the cut your original size is required, you may eliminate some of the contents. So by re or retaining the contents, you have to do this. So after cropping, you get the. Uh, you, uh, after copying, you get the you get your original enlarged but proportionate to your required. Take the other another example. This is your required. This is your required. This is your original. So previous one you have cropped it from the top. Why? Because your diagonal line was touching the side vertical line. In this case, see this required and this original, you place the required on the original. Now draw the diagonal line through the required and it will intersect on the top horizontal line. From there, you will have to draw a rectangle and that portion will be cropped. So what is the difference between the previous one and this one? Difference is this one, the diagonal is, is touching the top line, that is why you are cropping from the side. And the previous one, the diagonal line, diagonal line is touching the side, side vertical lines and you are cropping from the top. top. So this is the difference. The diagonal line will decide which portion to be cropped. So this is a conventionally if your photographs or the illustration is in hard copy or on the paper, you can do these things. But in case if you are working on computer, okay, this is another method conventionally. You can scale it mathematically. Suppose you have got the size of the picture 16 centimeter by 20 centimeter. This is the example I have given it here to be reduced to centimeter in width. As I had mentioned, that always the scaling should be done only one sides, not the both sides. So in this case, what we are doing it, we are reducing 10 centimeter in width. To find out the depth, so we don't know the depth of the illustrations. Here we are. Uh, Mathematically, we are calculating with a simple equation formula. It's a 16 centimeter original width and 20 centimeter is original depth. And 10 centimeters is a new width 
and and uh, new depth we don't know. That's why we have put this x. So if we multiply it, x is equal to 16. 16 x will be 16 x is equal to 20 20 centimeter. Uh, yeah, sorry, 60 centimeter into x will be 200 centimeter. The 200 or 200 divided by 16 will be 12.5 centimeter. Try to uh, do, uh, see it again. Uh, see it again and try to understand it. Your original size is 16 centimeter to 20 centimeter, and your one side will be reduced to one side means your width will be reduced to 10 centimeters. So 16 upon, upon 20, it is original, and you will be 10 in upon x. Why x? Because x size we don't know. We have to find out the x. So if we multiply it, x into 16 will be, and 20 into 10. The 20 to 10 will be 2000, uh, 200. Then if you divide the 200 by 16, and you will get the 12.5 centimeter side centimeter will be the width. So your new dimension will be 12. 5 centimeter in width. Okay? But it is a scaling, but in case the, the areas are not in proportion, both the dimensions are different. See this, this, uh, this example, your example is 20 centimeter by 16 centimeter, is the original, is to be fit within the area of 16 into 12. Now these are not in proportion. In this case, some portion of the of the illustration should be cropped, then it will, be, it will be proportionate. So which area to be cropped? It is slightly tricky. In this case, compare between 16 and 30 and 12 and 18. Naturally, 30 and 16 is a much wider side. So the crop area should be from the wider side. So now what you have to do it, that your original width should be converted into new width, that will be x upon 18 and the other side will be will be will be 16 upon 12 now the x into 12 equal to 16 by 18 will be 288 so if you 288 divided by 12 then you get 24 centimeter 24 centimeter will be your your width so the 30 centimeter to 25 centimeter, how much you have to uh, allow to wait? 34 centimeter minus 6 centimeter, you will get the, the area to be cropped. After cropping, what you are getting it? Your new dimension will be the 24 centimeter will be by 24 uh, will be 24 centimeter by 16 centimeter. 16 centimeter will be remain at it, as it is. You are not, you are cropping only the only the 30 centimeter sides. So this is the way we can do it on mathematically. Now this can be done on computer as well. In a computer, how you can scale it, you can do it like a scaling and cropping. Select the area of the visual to be enlarged or reduced. Naturally, the content should be selected first. Drag the selection border with the help of software sizing tool. Then drag the corner of the selection node diagonally to make the pictures rectangle. Why I'm doing it diagonally? Because unless, unless I drag it diagonally, it will not be in proportion. Otherwise, if you drag it from the middle of the of the node, then it will distort the, the image. What we are doing it here? Take the example. Okay, I have not brought the example over here. Uh, sizing and masking. Okay. 
once the cropping and, and scaling is over, mark the illustration with a size that will be finally reproduced. The mark, this should be marked, if it is on paper, the illustration on paper, if, I, if we mark the arrow mark from horizontally or vertically and, and mark, it in, mark it in centimeter. But the <coughs> continuous stone illustration slightly bigger than the, the size to be reproduced. Why? Because if the size is slightly not enlarged, say it is very little, say one or two millimeter. Why that much? That's so little. Because if you keep the size same, the size it should be reproduced, then there is a possibility a hairline, white line will appear around the illustrations. That's why this is required if the illustration to be reproduced. Sizing and marking can be done in percentage as well. It is very simple. Divide the regard width by the original width. Again, I am telling you the one side should be taken in consideration, either width or, or depth. So what we, what we are doing it? We are dividing the width and multiply it by 100 and get the percentage of the and uh, percentage and reduction of the uh, enlarged, uh, reduction or enlargement. Take the example of the original size 10 centimeter by 14 centimeter is to be reduced to 7 centimeter in width. So in percentage how much it will be? Here what you will have to do it? The 7 centimeter should be divided by the 10. 7 centimeters should be divided by the 10 and the multiplied by 100. You get the, you get the percentage. 7 divided by 10 multiplied by 100, you get the 70 percent of the picture to be enlarged. I take the other example. The size is 5, five centimeter by 9 centimeter. It is to be enlarged by 12 centimeter in width. The previous one we have done it in reduction. And in this case, it should be, it is an enlargement. The 10 centimeter by 9 centimeter to be enlarged by 12 centimeter in width. The calculation will be the same way that 12 divided by 5, 5 and multiplied by 100. The bigger size will be front and the smaller size will be the, the, the next. So you will have to divide by smaller size. Then you get the the enlarged size. Enlarged will be 240 percent. This percentage and enlargement is used if you are using the digital photograph because digital photographs always it is coming in percentage, how much percentage it is, it is enlarged or how much percentage it is reduced. Or if you scan the image, if you get it in the computer and you can you can reduce it in percentage. Of course, in a, in a scan image or a computer, you have the options to break the uh, dimension in centimeters as well. Sizing and masking, uh, marking. Scan image on computer screen can be enlarged or reduced by percentage. Your percentage should be given either width or depth so that it will be exact proportion as I am telling you repeatedly. The sizing can be done on a layout program as well. Here you can mask the required content. The visual can be placed within the predetermined shapes. Masking command of the layout software will hide the content of the pictures falling outside the shapes. Resizing of shapes is possible within the shape.
take these pictures. These are pictures, too much of content. I don't need this content in my layout. So I have imported the pictures in my layout program and mask it. Say, the mask it, the required idea. When you mask it, then the rest of the things are visible in light colors. Light colors and, and you know, layout, only the content will be visible so that you can place your other content, text, etc., around the visuals. See, now when you are placing it in your layout program, then you have the option to enlarge or reduce the content. And also you can resize the, the content area. Here, see this, you have resize your content area. How you can do that? Just drag the selection horizontally or vertically, you select the content. If you, if you want to reduce it, then in that case, you see the lighter area of the background and you find the nodes and diagonally you drag it and the image will be reduced and, and you keep on doing it so long you do not get your desired content. Sir, with this note, because we have very less time left with us, almost two minutes left, okay. uh, I think that uh, we can uh, uh, carry this lecture forward uh, tomorrow and we would be discussing more if you feel so or we okay. would be discussing on new topic. Okay. Uh, with this note, we take your leave. Uh, dear friends, if you have uh, any queries or if you want to give your feedback regarding this particular lecture, then you can mail us at info.cc at the rate nic.in. And if you want to access these particular this particular lecture, then uh, you can um, access it with the help of you. YouTube uh, and we have ample of lectures by Professor N. N. Sarkar on graphics and print production on YouTube only. So it is all for your accessibility. With this note, thank you sir. Thank you so very, thank much. You very much.